so far in this series, you have learned um, a lot of the steps of the accounting cycle. Have you learned how to analyze business transactions and how to journalize those business transactions, how to post those to a ledger, and then how to create your unadjusted trial balance. So the next step would be to learn adjusting entries. Now, typically what you'll see are there uh, six general types of adjusting entries or um, actually four types of different things that you're going to see like prepaid expenses, um, deferred revenues, but here we're just going to focus on the general process of adjusting. So I just have three examples for us to do today. Now, one thing to keep in mind about adjusting entries is that they are typically done at the end of a period or they are done at the end of a period and our focus is on what has changed, what needs to be updated. Now, um, whenever you're looking for the change, this might affect your number depending on the wording. So it's very important that you really analyze what is going on with these adjusting entries. So in this case, supplies on hand at the end of the month were 800. Now, what we are focused on is the change. What needs to be updated here? So when we're looking at supplies, we're not focused on what is on hand or what the current balance is. We're focused on what was used. Um, the same thing is could be said with prepaid insurance. So prepaid insurance expired during the month. Um, so we're focused on what was expired. Uh, wages, we're focused on what accrued. That is the change for this period. So let's go ahead and start analyzing what happened here. Um, for supplies, supplies on hand at the end of the month were $800. Now in this case, they're not really telling us um, what had been used. They are telling us what's left over. So we actually have to take a look at a different piece of information here. So according to our unadjusted trial balance from last time, our supplies has a $2,000 sorry, $2,000 balance. However, according to our information here, supplies, we only have $800 of them. So we actually have to do some adjusting here. So if our records indicate that we have $2,000 in supplies, however, we only have $1,800 left, then how much did we use? $2,000 minus $800. So we used $1,200 in supplies. So that will be the amount of our adjusting entry. So I'm going to plug that in here. End of the month. We use 1,200 and 1,200. Now, of course, if we remember our rules of journalizing, we need a debit account and a credit account. So let's really start analyzing using those rules that we did last time. Now, um, what's one account that's being affected? Well, when we use supplies, what's happening to our supplies? Um, that account goes down. Now try to remember those account types. What type of account are su is supplies? Now supplies is an asset account. So how do we make an asset go down? Credit. So supplies have to be credited for that $1,200. Remember supplies went down. It's an asset account. How do we decrease an asset? Credit. Now let's analyze the other part of this because we're still missing one piece. Now what other account was affected when we use up supplies? Now usually when we use something up, we incur an expense. So let's take a look at our expenses and see which one will work best. Supplies expense. This would be the best one for us to use. Actually, the only one we could really use because it's not wages, it's not rent, it's not insurance, it's not utilities, it is supplies. So supplies expense would be our debit. And if we want to analyze this, we can go back to our list. What accounts are being affected? Okay, supplies expense. Do we have more expense or less expense? We have more expense. We used up supplies, so our expenses went up. What type of account is that? That's an expense account. How do we make an expense account go up? Debit, hence why we debited that supplies expense. Now let's take a look at this next one. January 31st. Now, one thing that's missing here is some prepaid insurance expired during the month. Okay, well, we don't really know how much. So let's take a look at what we did there. Journal entries. Okay. So let's analyze what really happened here. 
Now they tell us that some prepaid insurance expired. So let's go back to our journal entries and our business transactions and see what really happened here. Okay, insurance. Here we go. On January 8th, we paid one year of insurance in advance for $6,000. So at the beginning of the month, and we can say this is the beginning of the month, it's close enough, we paid $6,000 for the entire year. Now, how many months have passed? Well, there's January and this is January 31st. So only one month has passed during this period. So one month of insurance has expired. So if $6,000 is for one year, how much do we have for one month? So 6,000 divided by 12 months in a year, that means that $500 in insurance has expired. So there, you've already found your amount. $500, $500. Now, let's find out what accounts are going to be affected here. Now, if prepaid insurance expired, what do you think is happening to the balance in that prepaid insurance uh, account that we had analyzed earlier? It's going down. So prepaid insurance is going down. Now, remember, all prepaids are assets. So how do we make an asset go down? Credit. So let's credit prepaid insurance. Now remember, I'm crediting on the second line because debits go first, so I have to skip a line. Now, what's going to go in my debit column? Well, what did we use up? We used up insurance. So what type of account would that be? That would be insurance expense. Now, we finally get to record that expense because we used up some of the insurance that we previously purchased. So generally, this is what we are going to be doing for each one. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that last one. One moment, number. Okay. Sorry, the little green dot would annoy me otherwise the whole time. Okay, now let's take a look at this last one. On January 31st, wages accrued during the month were 700. So on January 31st, are they telling us the change or the ending balance? In this case, they are just telling us exactly what had changed. So this one's easy. We get to just put in 700. Okay, so what accounts are being affected here? Well, we know that we accrued an expense, so wages, that's not good, right? So we have, well, I mean, it's, it's good, but it's not good for our bottom line. We have some wages expense now. Now we have more expense. How do we increase an expense? Debit. So wages expense is going to be our debit. Now, if we accrued these, does that mean that we paid them right now? No, that means that we have to pay them later, so we owe something. So where are we going to look on here to see how much we owe in wages? That would be wages payable, liability. So let's go ahead and put in our wages payable. Now one thing I want you to notice here is that with these entries, um, we never see cash. Cash will never be affected in an actual adjusting entry. So don't look at cash. Cash was very popular once we did our general journal entries, but now that we are on adjusting entries, we will not be messing with cash. Um, another thing to keep in mind is typically, um, every single adjusting entry will affect one income statement account and one balance sheet account. And this is uh, generally what happens. Now let's actually do one more because it's really good practice. Let me see. This is one that we'll typically see. Now in this case, this is another one that we might see. Um, unbilled fees at month end were 500. So let's think of what happened. Um, if we have the right, but we haven't billed them yet, but if we have the right to bill them some fees, what does that mean? Um, that means that we provided a service. So in that case, when we provide a service, if we do something on our end, that means that we get to record revenue. So we have one revenue account here, fees earned. So how do we increase a revenue account? Credit. So let's go ahead and credit fees earned for that amount that was unbilled. Now in this case, they're telling us exactly the amount of the change here. They're saying that 500 were unbilled. Now let's take a look at this second piece. Now, 
When we provide a service, remember, there's only two scenarios here. Either we get paid now or we get paid later. Now, if we get paid now, what would that be? That would be cash. However, cash will never be seen in an adjusting entry. And also, these were unbilled. If we didn't bill them yet, then that means that we're supposed to bill them in the future, which means that these people are going to be giving us money in the future. So we are going to be receiving money in the future. Accounts receivable. That's our other side. So these are just uh, four examples of entries that you might see. Um, other ones might be... Uh, um, adjusting the unearned fees account, which we don't have in this one, and we also could be accumulating depreciation. So that's another one to be taking a look at. Now, um, when we analyze these, as I was saying before with the um, income statement balance sheet uh, accounts that we might see, supplies expense, income statement, supplies, balance sheet, insurance expense, income statement, prepaid insurance, balance sheet, um, let's just, this is the one I really want to focus on. They aren't always in that order of income statement and then balance sheet. In this case, accounts receivable is an asset, so it appears on our balance sheet, and fees earned is a revenue, so it appears on our income statement. Now, if you haven't learned too much about this yet, um, just hold tight. We are going to get to income statements, um, statement of owners, equity, and balance sheets in another video, so we will get back to this. So in our next video, we will continue with the accounting cycle with posting these adjusting entries and updating our trial balance. So that'll be the next one you're going to take a look at in this series. So in the meantime, happy studying and we'll see you soon.